All right. Today is January 15th. We are about halfway through our Winter Warriors con uh, Challenge and our charity drive for the Chase Children's Home in Portsmouth. I'm uh, going to give you a quick update. The team has run right around 1,900 miles, and donations have been rolling in today and yesterday. Now we're over $3,200. Um, so today I've got Kevin Crowley with me from over in Concord, and some of these folks who've been donating are from his people, basically. So uh, the first one is Megan Crowley. Kevin, do you want to give a shout out to Megan? <laughs> um, I don't think she's, I feel like she's already being triggered by the fact that you're calling her out and being there. Yeah. So I it's, move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Colleen McBain. Oh, she's the sweet sister that I, I, I love so much that always does all the amazing things for our family. So That's awesome. She made an amazing donation. So thanks, Colleen. And uh, Donna Crowley. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom. She's, she's super sweet. Um, we, we trade donations back and forth to our different, um, awesome our different important, charitable organizations. It's important to give, so thanks, Donna. Yeah. And uh, Kelly Palmer gave a generous donation, too. Kelly Palmer is the one who officially started my running bug, so I blame her for everything that has happened since then. It comes so. full circle, so yeah, it thanks, does. Kelly. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, this has been, been fun. So, um, Kevin, you and I got to know each other through the running community. My first run with you was we paced the Seacoast Half Marathon, the you and Tim Haran. I don't know if you remember that. You're the oh, yeah. seven minute pacers. And I was like, I like this guy. You're like singing along the way and bringing the positivity. And then the next time I ran with you was a full Pemi loop. And uh, I had never climbed any of the 4,000 footers. And that day we got like a bunch of them. I remember being wiped out toward the end. Uh, but your positive energy kind of helped pull me through it. It's why, and I, I still to this day remember you actually complimenting me about being positive. And I, like, I don't know where it came from. I don't know where you thought it came from because <laughs> I don't think there's any real positivity after you're 27 miles in yeah. and it, it was hot, it was miserable. Um, no, but it was really fun. It was really fun seeing other people struggle as much as I do in the woods and in that type of vertical situation. It was a challenge. Um, we had some bulldogs out there and uh, yeah, it was, a, yeah. it was a fun day, like kind of awesomely terrible, I think. <laughs> it's in our sweet spot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. But tell me a little bit about how you got started running. So yeah, um, I started, I started running probably, I did the middle school into high school track kind of scenario. Um, I was doing all different sports, all the different times. Um, but one of the things that really I found to be most interesting was track during that time. Um, my sister who, Kelly, who mentioned earlier was around the time that I was in middle school was coming into her own as a varsity, uh, middle distance runner, running States, doing all that cool stuff. And it looked really cool. Um, and I tried to emulate the same thing. And I guess part of my overall running career has been highlighted by the fact that I think the guy's competition is very, very steep in a lot of these different places. And so um, I actually never made it to States as a middle distance, or I think I ran like a 455 is like my best mile in high school, um, which is, which is kind of like what I can do now, which is kind of weird. Right. Um, <laughs> doing um, and then yeah. like most people who hit that middle wall of success, I, I left it. I left running for quite a bit of time um, in my early, my early college working career and stuff like that. Um, and then as my world started to settle back down and I became a young adult, I dipped my toes back into it. Um, and then it really didn't become a lifestyle choice, I guess you want to call it, until my late 30s, I mean, my late 20s. Um, when I started to get a little bit, see some really good progress and see some really good speed increases in overall performance. And then it became kind of a, let's see where this takes me as a hobby and a fun thing. So it's been about six years or so, six or seven years of running, of Solid significant run. running. So. And you had a time in there, I think we've talked about this, you became a fat guy kind of the same way I did at one point, right? <laughs> yes. A bit thin, yeah. And then kind of brought it back down a bit. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so I spent, yeah, I spent that early, those early twenties, just absolutely decimating my fitness. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I worked in the restaurants. Um, so late hours, bad food, bad choices, just, um, 
I remember looking back at pictures of like when I was coming into like right near the end of grad school and I was maybe almost around 220 pounds. Um, yeah. And I'm only, I'm 5'10 if I, in my mom, my tippy toes. So it was <laughs> not pretty. Um, but yeah, I came around and it's, it's been a very positive component of my life coming yeah. forward as a young adult. So it's nice because yeah, that weight and running are not compatible. No. So it's like, you know, if it kind of balloons up there, you really can't run anymore. So it kind of keeps you in check. So that's awesome. Now um, I probably can't get any less though. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm having that trouble as well, but it's fine. <laughs> We're healthy. We're doing it. Um, so along the way, what would you say your favorite accomplishment has been in the sport? So I guess, well, get I, running a marathon is I guess an accomplishment in itself. Um, always finding a new place to find joy is actually kind of one of the things that I find to be one of the biggest accomplishments. Um, I, I see like transforming this running thing that I do into a thing that I can find new ways to challenge myself without getting bored, without losing like any like, any like sad, I don't ever get sad about things changing or not hitting a goal or not being fast enough yep. saying like, Oh, like, let's go explore this new thing. Let's go see what, let's see, go see what trails do. Let's go see what ultra running is. Let's go see what just all of these different things that all these different cool people are doing um, has been really one of the fun accomplishments for me. Um, two, two small ones I have, I, I, I would laugh about because I'm not the fastest person in this group by a large margin. Like you guys are all ridiculously fast and it's kind of, it's, it's kind of bewilderingly upsetting how fast <laughs> on average everyone is. I'd say we all um, feel humbled on a daily basis just with the collective group. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, like my 730 medium pace is like a joke. Um, so one of, two of my fun accomplishments was last during the Seacoast Long Run Group Olympics last year was actually running 109 miles in one week. That was pretty fun just for the fact that I got to say that I beat you all. And yeah, I was like, hey, I, yeah. Gold and then um, a couple of years ago, I did a reach the beach and I was looking through and I knew every, all my segments and stuff like that. And I knew one of my segments was gonna be a tough one. And I knew that the crown leader was Patrick Curran, who a lot of the people in the seacoast and Northeast know is a super, super fast, super strong um, ultra runner um, and he runs Solomon he's like super he's a great um great individual person too from all, all accounts but for some reason in my brain I just knew that I wanted to go for that segment because in my brain I was like imagine him reading his phone saying you just lost a segment to Kevin Crowley and I was like yeah. uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. yeah uh oh who is this Kevin Crowley guy um so I ended up I ended up demolishing it and it was just like it was super fun and I that was one of those moments that I was like I'm actually getting fast because I ran like five miles at like 540 pace or so around there. Yeah. And it really like, and it started to put me in that category. I was like, Hey, I can actually do this decently well. Yeah. And so like that definitely flipped the switch for me for competitive running. So, you know, Patrick Karen was somewhere like looking at his phone. He saw that he's like, this Kevin Crowley guy was on a bicycle. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm flag you. That's awesome. Just, it just like it, for some reason that just tickled me. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Um, so, what are you up to for Winter Warriors? You're holding up well. I see you hitting those consistent miles. I know you got a couple kids at home, so I'm always impressed that you're getting out there and getting out the door. Yeah, I just I just checked it out. Um, I haven't run yet today, and I'm at 161 miles. Um, I came off of a rare, pretty tough December because I wanted to close out 2020 with 3,000 miles. I remember. And it was a nightmare because my, the end of the year just got completely demolished, not even with the holidays because the holidays didn't really exist. It yeah. just was the kids were crazy and like just everything was all over the place. Um, so that first week I did 90 miles total, but it was only 30 for the Winter Warriors. I've been trying to hit around 80 to 85 miles a week. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a couple good days coming up ahead. Um, I feel good. Um, I feel like I've been, I, I've been looking at my Strava weekly mileage and it, it's just, it looks like a really nice pristine build curve right now. Yeah. And 
there's something about that that just makes me feel like if we get to race in 2021, there's going to be a lot of good times and on my legs this year so yeah. i think everyone fingers crossed is hoping for some races I hope so i hope we can kind of do the icarus thing fly close to the sun maybe not have the wings burn up like we'll be okay in february and march we'll see what happens but we're gonna hammer that goal no matter what <laughs> oh yeah yeah all right so I, I, well, I, well as long as we don't put too many workouts in there <laughs> i know i thought we had a ceasefire on that but i was <laughs> <laughs> um so I want to let you get back to your kids and your family and probably finishing off the work day today. But uh, really quickly, why do you think this is important to be doing this for Chase? Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I'll back up. I'm typically not a huge advocate and I'm not, I don't like to go too far and I'm not a charity guy. I, I don't know if there's a better way to sum it up. Like for some, I loved, I like to donate to, but I usually am not the kind of person that is going out of their way to heavily advocate for charities, even though they do fully deserve it. It's something that I somewhat don't feel authentic doing. It kind of feels weird sometimes. Um, but within this scope and within like this, this funky little world that we built with this Winter Warriors, um, making something, making it more than just us putzing around on the internet and giving each other uh, crap all day long. Um, it definitely elevates it to something that's actually special. Um, yeah. So it definitely makes it much more worthy for all of us to be part of it. Um, just by just by even trying to raise charity dollars, just makes it fun. Um, and so that's kind of why I've even more invested in it. That's why I'm trying my best to do charity because um, just by everyone being invested in it together, yeah. it makes it that much more fun. Well, so. in here, it's, it's been a blast and like kind of having a conversation with Ben the other night who works down there, like, uh, you know, that was really helpful to me to kind of connect like the, uh, the result of like all this generosity that's coming in. I mean, it's definitely going to help them, but, but yeah, it, it brings me to the whole thing. So, well, thank you again for being part of it. It's awesome. Uh, I'm glad you've been able to get to the Seacoast and join a few of the long runs and suffer with us. Uh, I think I might be able to sneak out one more time. We'll see how it goes. I hope so. That's awesome. <laughs> I'll let you get back to it for now. Thanks again for doing this and, and thanks for all you're doing to, for the cause and hammering those miles in and get out and get that run in. I heard you say somewhere in there that you hadn't done it yet. And yeah, it's getting late. Like, getting close. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I don't know how you're going to fit 18 in, but get after <laughs> it. All right, okay. Kevin. Thanks again. We'll talk Thank to you soon. Bye. Take care.